Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we're going to be discussing the final spirit of the expansion, Wounded Waters Bleeding. This spirit is a high complexity spirit with plenty of offensive, offensive and control abilities. It has some fear, defense, and utility. It is a beast user and also disease user. It is a 0-1-1 spirit, and what that means is we're not placing presence on reclaim, and then we're placing presence on the other two growth options. The big special rule, or the big uh, mechanic that Wounded Waters has is it has these healing markers. So at the beginning of, or at the end of every spirit phase, you're gonna gain either water or animal, depending on how many uh, elements you have of that type. So if you have more water element cards, you're gonna gain a water token. If you have more animal, you're gonna gain an animal token. And what where that goes is it's, it's gonna go right up here on the top right of the card. So if I played one card turn one, and I got the the water here, and then I had it played a water card, I would get a water card or a water marker. Once you get three markers, you then are going to upgrade and gain a new innate. So they gave us two healing cards out of the four. You have a animal one and you have a water one. So it's the, they showed us the animal healing card for the special rule, and then they showed us the water healing card for the innate. And you're going to heal once, once you have three markers, um, well, three total markers or two of a specific element. And then you'll gain the second one on turn five. And that's when you have at least five total markers and three of a specific type. When you gain, so on turn five, when you gain that new healing card, that card will replace one of your innates. So it says here, this card is going to replace your Sanguinary Taint innate, so that will, that will be your right innate. You can guess that the other innate that you'd get will replace the left innate. One of the negatives of playing this spirit is this bottom part here. It says, um, at, the, uh, at the end of the spirit phase, you may then, or not may then, you have to destroy presence or forget a power card. And... Honestly, it's not that big of a, um, a loss. You do start with four presents on the board starting. Um, and so if you're losing a presence every turn, but you're placing a presence every turn, it eventually kind of, um, it, it it's fine. Like, it breaks even. Um, in terms of power level, I think it's pretty powerful. I put it at 26 out of 68. That puts it right, right around B tier, right around where Fangs is, Wounded Waters. It may be a little bit higher, like lower A tier, but definitely not S or X tier. So I'm going to talk about the positives. I think this is some of the best art that we got. I mean, the spirit board looks incredible. Just everything. This looks just so cool. The picture looks great. I like that it uses beasts and disease. I think thematically it's on point too. You're starting with one card play for the first few turns. And then as the game goes on, you're going to get to two and then possibly three three energy and then you're also gaining cool special rules and also cool innates unfortunately though i really think they missed the ball I, I really think this is the one spirit out of all of the eight new spirits that they really uh messed up on and i'm gonna explain why now this is just my opinion i know there are some players that really enjoyed this spirit um but i'm gonna tell you why i don't like this spirit and that's because of the tracks so if you can see here for the first two turns of the game, you only get to play one card. And a lot of the most interesting de decisions players get to make are in that first few turns. And unfortunately, this spirit just kind of cuts all of that out because you have to play one card. Because you have to get your, your elements to get your healing markers. And you also need to impact the board. Like a lot of other spirits, for instance, I'm just going to use Vengeance as an example... I can choose to, like, G2 bottom track, not play any cards, G2 bottom track, and then play three cards. I could do, like, a crazy opening like that. Um, I guess Vengeance couldn't do that because of energy economics, but you get the point. There are some spirits, like if you've watched my Whirlwind video, where you can do these weird openings where you don't actually play cards, and you can do these cool, like, late game power turns that you really just can't get with Wounded Waters. Like, all that's cut out. You pretty much have to play a card one of your, your four starting cards, and um, you're going to get your left innate or your right innate, but it basically does the same thing, right? Because this left innate is pushing explorers, the right innate is doing a single point of damage, um, and to me that, that takes away a lot of 
the interesting decision. You don't even gain energy, right? So like you're starting with four energy and you're not gaining any. So that also cuts out major power strats. So it, it also gets worse. So now if I look at these growths, I can't even pick G3 until I have one healing card. So I can't even get, I can't even choose another growth option until turn four. And to me, that just cuts it out. It's like, okay, I have to place a presence. I have to gain a power card. I have to place a presence. I have to gain a power card. And they did this to make it such that your power, your special rules and the innates that you get are very powerful. And that's how they compensate for that. But for me, it just leaves a very unrewarding experience. Um, the last thing that I don't like about this spirit is the innate that you gain is so powerful. Um, a lot of times on turn five, you just like you're you become so strong the invaders cannot stop you and you just kind of roll over the invaders to the point where it's just it's kind of a joke um it just sucks that like a lot of times the best thing for you to do is just spam your whatever innate that you unlock and that to me is um very frustrating um i actually i just remember there's another thing that i don't like and that is um it uses disease and you can see here we just add disease on this right innate i really wish there was more ways to use disease on this spirit um like vengeance i mean vengeance is a disease spirit of course so you're that's your whole kit um but no other spirit in the game really uses disease so i was really hoping that wounded waters would be a spirit that would have like a crazy disease innate and i mean we don't have that here unfortunately and even the special rule i guess we don't have the animal special rule yet but even this the the special rule here or the um innate just like no disease present and i just figured if the disease spirit was going to be um if we were going to get a disease spirit i figured it would play a larger role looking at the animal healing card it says when your powers add or move beasts into a single land you may do one damage there per beast added which has some really cool synergies like tigers hunting this thing with tigers just do decimate lands and that's a very cool thing to be able to do um so overall i think power level it's fine for me it just doesn't resonate with me um i just the lack of choices that i get to make throughout the game and then the game becomes very trivialized in the mid late game really sucks um in terms of playing this into high diff, it really struggles because you have one card play for the first couple of turns. So into single level sixes, you're pretty solid. Um, but once you start increasing to like doubles, but low doubles, like we're talking like Prussia 2, um, Russia 5, stuff like that, you may actually run into problems. Um, now, there are some spirits that really, or there are some players that really love this spirit. And um, I know this spirit will resonate with people. The artwork is incredible. People love Shroud, even though this thing is just uh, not very good at all. Um, so I know people will like this thing because this thing is also good. It's just, like I said, lack of choices leads to an unfun playing experience. For me, that is. Okay, so moving on past that, let's look at the la uh, this new major we got. And that's Flocking Red Talons, three energy cost. It's a fast three range from a wetlands. It is air water plant and animal and it's going to add a beast you may move up to two beasts from three range for each beast choose a different invader one damage in addition push those invaders per beasts then if you have this threshold you get to repeat it uh, i love this card this is one of the cards that we um when it first came out it was very weak and we were able to refine it to where it's in a very, very good spot. I love that if I'm playing, for instance, oh, I can't change my spirit, but um, if I'm playing Fangs, Fangs is a plant animal, and this is plant animal, so it's easy, not easy threshold, but Fangs can utilize it, but, you're, but Fangs is missing that air. So Fangs wants to find an air card to help threshold this card. Now, if I pick the other main V spirit, like many mines, Many Minds has the air, but is missing the plant that you need to threshold it. So it's it's very cool that both beast spirits have this really cool beast power that they can utilize, but they're missing a small component to thresholding it, which I think is very, very clever uh, design. Um, overall, I think this card is about A tier. Um, I pick this card up a lot on stone, um, just a lot of different spirits because that fast control is just so key. Let's see if I've missing anything else i think that's it for now um 
I do plan on making uh, videos throughout the next couple of several months regarding Nature's Incarnate. I know they were saying that they do plan on doing these mini releases where they'll reveal more and more stuff as the months get closer to the end of next year for when they plan on doing a release date or a, re a uh, formal release. So if this, if you like this video, like subscribe for more content. I'll see you in the next video.